Let's talk about trial protocols for a little bit, because I think in the past, uh, 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 the way a lot of technologies have been implemented is that uh, a company will produce their protocol, uh, decide on their endpoints, they'll re recruit their sites, recruit their patients, then at some point start thinking, we should incorporate some virtual aspects into this trial or, or make this a virtual trial. And at that point, it seems like... It, you're way too late. It's almost as if we need to go back and start incorporating this uh, into the process as we're designing those protocols. Uh, would you agree with that? I do agree with that. And um, often um, I actually share with people that that's kind of like uh, many people live in um, homes or apartments or so forth. It's often like you would then build a house and then decide you're going to rewire it. Um, and maybe that seems extreme, extreme to people, but in a sense, that's what you're deciding once, you, once you've got the protocol um, written, and then you decide that you're gonna put in virtual components. And it could have, it could be sort of that um, serious of a, a change that you're trying to actually implement because it could have sort of that level of effect. So I agree with you. So I guess how I then say, well, you know, what does that mean? Because that's not helpful to me. Um, when you actually say that. So uh, I often talk to people about during protocol development, um, and we've actually been uh, talking to many clients and trying to talk to people that actually are involved in protocol development and so forth. We actually find that it's quite uncommon, um, and I use the word uncommon, um, that people actually do the four following things, that they actually look for new methods and strategies to optimize the collection of high quality data. And so when you think about that's the reason why you're doing the protocol, because you want to get the data to answer the scientific question, right? And it's in that patient population. So you want to get the best data with that patient population. We ask if you um, are looking for new strategies to maximize patient compliance, adherence, and engagement, because finding those patients and actually getting them to qualify and then agreeing to participate, that's very precious. And so you want to be able to keep them and. Uh, and collect that information. So do you actually do that? Uh, and then are you actually using the technologies that help you capture, analyze, store, and improve the actual flow of data? So you have the data at the right time in order to make the decisions you need to make. And then are you actually looking at the new regulatory guidance uh, from the agencies and the countries in which you're working? And so those are the four things when you're writing the protocol, or are you actually doing those when you're actually writing the protocol? And so I'll go back to what I said, is that when you actually talk to people, the majority of the time people say, no, we're not doing that. And so um, when you think about, you know, trying to then, you know, do the right, you know, doing what you need to do um, to write the protocol and embrace sort of virtual components and embrace what makes sense for all the stakeholders that are involved, uh, you really need to do that at the beginning and really sort of research that and incorporate that in your protocol development rather than sort of get to the end and say, now let me apply that. It, that's why I use the analogy. So you built your house and now you want to rewire it. It seems right. like very difficult to do that at the end. Yeah, and do you have any insights into why companies seem to be reluctant to change their protocols or, or hesitant to do it? it? Does it again go back to uh, the feeling that we're incorporating risk into our trials if we if, if we do that? Um, that's possible. I think that's that's very plausible. And um, I have thoughts. Um, so you know, I think it's different for different clients, and I think it's different for different companies and. And everyone's sort of on a different journey to sort of get there. But I have sort of three thoughts that might be driving this. And as we all know, clinical research is very regulated. Like prior to joining Oracle, I was working at a pharmaceutical company for many years. And here's sort of the three areas that I feel that's sort of driving um, this is that one is um, the fact that we actually have protocol templates. Um, and I think they have their, their benefits and they actually have um, sort of, the, they have their barriers that sort of bring to the table. And those protocol templates sort of um, drive a certain way of uh, thinking, a certain way of working. And uh, those protocol templates are, were built on the way protocols have been run for many, many, many years. And they're really, those templates aren't really um, driven with sort of the virtual and all the new ways of working in, in, 
in, um, in mind. I also believe that um, the second is uh, the fact that there might be existing protocols um, with that given uh, condition or that given patient population um, and there's resource constraints. Uh, and often we'll use that existing protocol as a, uh, an influencer to uh, um, the current protocol that we're writing. And that often can uh, then influence how the, the protocol is written. Copy and paste is often used. And, um, and that can be a great thing uh, because you have a, a, a protocol clinical plan that, or that you're trying to influence and so forth. But also that can hinder your ability to embrace uh, sort of what could be before you and what you should be considering in this particular population. And then also, I think um, up until late 2019, there's been a little incentive for many people to actually make the change. Um, and when that incentive's not there, um, doing things the way you've done it before and being successful, um, why not? And so uh, we now have an incentive to change. And now we've experienced that change. And so now we're probably more open to it. So I think that's those are my thoughts as to why um, companies haven't actually um, probably embarked upon the change. And, and uh, that's what I'd like to offer. <laughs>